Hello guys, welcome back to another video. I have a new Enaton workflow here, which creates these new trending videos. This TikTok account has 4.8 million likes and already at 167 thousand subscribers. We only started about a month ago, 2nd of June. He's blowing up because of this food being fed itself videos. This kind of videos here, 15.8 million views. You can also get in on this trend. Have a look at this. And recently as well, this one was just five days ago and already at one million. So get in on this trend right now. So I have my own Enaton workflow using ByteDance's C-Dance model, which is the same company as TikTok. It's pretty simple, nothing complicated. But before getting to that, let me just show you a few videos that it created. So you have the sound effects and everything. It's pretty cute, actually, I would say. A carrot. And I have another one, I think, here. Lime eating. And another one here. Pretty engaging, getting a lot of views. So I'm going to walk you through this Enaton workflow. To start, you can get the workflow from my school community or just follow the video to replicate what I've done. So I have this AI food video Enaton workflow here. And there's the workflow JSON. You can download it. After downloading it, what you do is go to Enaton installation and create a new workflow. You have these three dots here and import from file and select that JSON and that will load the workflow. Since I have already done that, I'm just going to explain to you what the workflow is. So our workflow starts with the schedule trigger here. You can run it on a schedule or do it manually. I run it manually, but I do use schedule trigger because you can add multiple schedule nodes in a workflow. That's why I use it. You can also add a chat trigger node where you can actually chat to the AI and any kind of specific videos to be created. For now, I am just instructing it to come up with different ideas here. This AI agent node is the AI agent node here. We have a OpenAI GPT 4.1 mini model attached to it. I think that's enough. And you have a structured output parser here. So this comes with different ideas. Each idea corresponds to a 10 second segment in the final output video. So if you have two ideas here, for example, that means that it's 20 second video. In this case, it has generated three ideas. That means that it will create a 30 second video because each segment is 10 seconds and we have a split out node just splits each idea so if you look here it comes as one item that gets turned into three items this is because you want to generate the videos for each idea in a loop delete that and i have a limit node here you don't have to have this because i'm testing i don't want to spend a lot of credits i want at least two videos to be created so i can see this teaching action if that is working properly so that's the reason for that limit node there i don't want to create longer videos and burn up my credits while I'm developing. I think that's enough for the demo. And you have a loop node here. If these items go through this loop one by one. The node here that submits the video generation request that is using WaveSpeed AI. So that is this website here. You can sign up for it and you can get an API key here. And I should probably top it up. You can get the API key there. Maybe add like two. Once you get the API key from CDAN's WaveSpeed's website, you put that API key here as bearer. This is not the best practice. Just to show you how it works, I have given it like that but ideally you will create this authentication parameter here and choose generic credential type and add your api key there but just so that you understand how this needs to be passed in the authorized session header for the http request this is how you have to pass it and the body is really aspect ratio 916 because we want it as a vertical video and duration is 10 seconds you can change it to five seconds but for this kind of videos i think 10 seconds it gives enough time for the spoon to move and the character to chew the food so i have a prompt here this comes from the previous limit node will pass the ideas one by one so that idea will be this one really let me just run this workflow from end to end once again so that i can actually show you what gets passed between these nodes so that will be two items orange carrot i also need to make sure i have enough credits in file yeah it should be enough so i'll wait for that to finish this has finished running at the end of the workflow it gets uploaded to a google drive so we're just going to see what it has uploaded I think uh web view link yeah the it's not really process for viewing it here so i'm just going to download it go to hopefully it has worked that was slow but uh, it works maybe you need to change the prompts a little bit but that is how you 
do it. So now that we have all the output from the workflow, we can actually see what gets passed through each node. So if I come back to this node here, see dance video, you can see that the prompt is hyper detailed stop motion video of a bright orange carrot. That's the second one. So if I go to one, maybe I change it to the first one, slow motion animation of a sculpture in the shape of smiling chestnut. And if I smiling chestnut, and that's the first prompt there. And the idea is that one. And then uh, I'm actually giving it a bit more restrictions here the foot must be upright the eyes are closed the spoon and the hand is visible in the first frame when mouth opens eyes are still closed but the face expresses joy so i'm just pending that to every ai generator instruction that comes through you can add more restrictions here if you want that gets submitted to this pos url here what you get out of that you get something like this an id and uh, which model that you used which is this model you can switch this to light model if you want like that it is eight cents per generation eight cents per five second video that'll be for 10 seconds 16 cents if you use light but it will be 30 cents per 10 second video if you use pro you can play around with that see what gives you best results i use pro gives the best results i think the next node here is that we are checking that if it is finished we are checking this variable here has an mp4 file in it if it's not present so if you go to the first executions here so it has executed like 10 times that means that uh, for two videos combined if i go to the first one outputs is empty array and it will keep checking if the mp4 file is available if it is not available it'll wait for you know, 20 seconds check the status this status you already got from the first uh, HTTP node here so once you submit it you will get a result URL here that is the URL that you have to ping to check if it is finished and if it is finished then that mp4 will be available and that is what is being checked in the if node output zero and it will go through the loop of waiting and until the mp4 file is available so once that video is generator is going to go through the sound effects generation portion here this HTTP node that submits the sound effects generation request that submits that to a provider called file ai that is this file ai provider here the gpu provider again you have to get an api key sign up you can get that api keys here and add a key generate a key like that copy paste that into your n8 workflow you have to pass the api key in the authorization header but instead of bearer it is just key and you paste that api key right over there that will be the url that's the audio model which is a video to video model it processes each video and adds the audio looking at it frame by frame it adds the audio it's not 100 as with any other a model we are passing the mp4 file which we get from the previous node comes from here mp4 file output zero so that's that so if you have a look at that that will get evaluated to that url and you have the prompt as well and i'm just saying asmr sound effects and you can also add a negative prompt, which means that you cannot add singing or speech or dialogue or any vocals trying to tell the model there. Duration is, this has to match the same duration as you give for C dance. Otherwise, it will just cut the video. If it is five seconds, it will shorten the video. So you don't want that. So it needs to match the C dance one. This SDTV node submits the request. Similar to WaveSpeed AI, you get a request ID and a status URL where you can ping and check the status for. That is what the next node is here, which check the SFX status. You using the status url it's a get request whereas the other one is a post request you'll have to use the same authorization headers again this is not the best practice best practice is to add a generic relation type and select header auth and add the same parameters there in the header that will give you status completed when it is completed otherwise it'll just go through the loop again and if not is to check the status is completed or not the first iteration the false branch and the status is still in progress the wait node here this is actually fast five seconds is enough and in the end we are using the response url that you got from the very first submission request when it's finished if you issue another std request there you'll get the mp4 that is generated pass all the authorization parameters and headers get that video is loaded here through an http request which is just passing on the video url from the response that you get from the previous node so this is the last video a second video in that the second idea for which the video was generated if i switch to the first one that will be this one it's kind of like scary actually but you will have the sound effects added to it we are writing each of these files that is combined with the sound effects into the file system using a read write node that is this node over here read write files from disk node it's just passing the data input binary field and just loading that file name from the yeah that bit load video with sfx and a binary data file name we're just using saving the file with the same file name into disk on the cloud version of n8 you won't be able to use ffmpeg but the file itself has an 
FFmpeg service, you can use files FFmpeg service to stitch it. So we are writing that to disk here and the, the loop is finished, which means that all the ideas, in our case, two ideas came through. We need to stitch those 10 second segments into one 20 second video. So that's what this aggregate node is. It collects the two videos that was generated and it says put the output in the field data and you have like that. You collect the URLs for the videos in one single object. If you look here, there's two items and now it is one item. So we are doing the opposite of the split. This is a code node in NA10. How many are videos coming through? It will just stitch them. It will generate an FFmpeg command that will join these MP4 files. So remember we have already saved these files to the disk and it will read from the disk these videos and stitch them together. It won't stitch them together yet. It generates the command and the output file name. Next is an execute node. Which this is what actually executes the FFmpeg command that was generated in the previous node. And once that is executed, you can see the logs here. The final video is already written into onto the disk. This needs to be read final video. So when you use the code node, it also gives here an output file name, which final stitched video will be written to. We're just using the same field to read the file. That is the after that, you have an upload to Google Drive node. You have to configure this with the Google Drive account. For that, you just simply go to Google Cloud Console. I have tons of other videos where you configure this. And also in our school community, I have given the step-by-step -step instructions how to do this. Credentials for Google Drive account. This is an upload operation. We're using the data field, which contains the video, and using the same output file name. And I'm selecting my drive and the file saved to. So that is this CDANCE folder here that I'm selecting. That's where the file will be saved. And the second second note is that even if you save it, it won't be accessible. So we are trying to share. We are doing a share operation. It is similar to going to Google Drive and clicking on a file and clicking the three dots and enabling file sharing. I'm using the ID of the file for each file in the Google Drive. When uploader gets this ID, a unique ID. And I'm using the ID here. The role is reader and it can be accessed by anyone with read permissions. That's what that says. And this needs to be added from here if you don't see it. If you download the template and and use that, it will be already there. But if you're building from scratch, you'll need to go to add option and select it for that to appear here. And once that is done, you can actually use the web content link to download it or web view link to web view the content on using your browser if it is prepared. So that's the idea. So that concludes the workflow really. So pretty simple, get in on this trend and make use of it. If you don't want to generate a duplicate ideas, create a simple memory, connect it, and then add an instruction saying do not create duplicate get ideas. It must be somewhere inside this prompt. If not, just add that. So that's the entire workflow. So again, I talk about NITN workflows, different workflows in my school community. So feel free to check it out. I have different NITN automations here, not just video automations. I have lead outreach automation. I'm working on this feed, AI videos. I have like different AI templates, VO3 videos, social media agent, which just generates your authority, increases your authority on social media, stuff like that. And long form video alt generator, keyword clustering, if you're into SEO and stuff like that. Pretty good place to get started with these workflows and check it out. We have a small but growing community and looking forward to see you inside. All the links will be in the description. So check it out and I'll see you in the next.